Now student, here is the question number 64. An element Y is a white translucent solid. Let me mark here, things given here. This is element Y which is white translucent solid at room temperature. So physical property, physical state is given at room temperature. It exhibit various allotropic form. Another hint. Some compounds of element Y find application in agricultural industry. Next hint. Y forms two solid oxides. A very big hint. We need to identify that element which is forming solid oxides which dissolve in water to form comparatively weak acids. Options you have here. Sulfur, nitrogen, phosphorus and carbon. One thing you should remember that if I talk about oxides of sulfur, nitrogen and carbon, these are gaseous in nature, not solid at room temperature. Very clear hint it is. So, on the basis of this, we can say that phosphorus can be the correct answer. Let's understand with the help of this option, phosphorus. Phosphorus is white translucent solid at room temperature, correct? It exhibits various allotropic form. Yes, red phosphorus, white phosphorus, black phosphorus. Some compounds of element also have the application in agriculture industry and phosphorus form two oxide P4O6 and P4O10 which dissolve in water to form weak acids. Yes, this is correct. It means on the basis of this discussion, we can simply say the correct answer is phosphorus that's given here in option C. So, you need to just mark answer as option C. I hope it is clear. Let's take question number 65. How many sigma bonds are present between two carbon atoms in fullerenes? You need to identify the total number of the sigma bonds. If you look at the structure of fullerene, you will identify that two carbon atoms are joined with the help of only one sigma bond is there. Right? So, on the basis of this, very easy to choose option A as the correct answer. That is option A. I hope it is clear. Now, let's take question number 66. A student was studying reactions of metals with dilute NaOH at room temperature. The important thing to understand here that student was studying reactions of metals with dilute NaOH and alkali you have and all these reactions are taking place at room temperature. The student took dilute NaOH in four different test tubes added copper powder to the test tube A. It means test tube A consists of copper powder, test tube B in which zinc dust is present and there is a test tube C in which aluminium powder is present. Similarly, iron powder is there in the test tube D. Now, you need to just identify in which test tubes he observed effervescence and if you identify you can just fill this blank. See here are the four options and you need to identify. If I talk about dilute NaOH it reacts with metal. Now if you look at the given option if I talk about copper powder it will not react with dilute NaOH. Similarly if I talk about zinc dust it will react with NaOH and hydrogen will be produced and it results in the effervescence. Effervescence would be observed there. Similarly, in case of aluminium powder also, there would be effervescence, but iron powder will not give effervescence when reacts with NaOH. So, in this case, the correct answer is given in option B, where it is written clearly that test tube B and C consist of those metals which are producing effervescence with dilute NaOH. So, let me mark here the correct answer. That is option B. I hope this question is also clear to you. The turn is for question number 67.